Hi. Hello again. We are in the Pure Worship book on page 127. We're at the subheading, Jehovah again provides watchmen to warn the wicked. And again, you'll be reading from the book and I'll be reading from the screen, so I'll be looking over your heads. I'm not distracted, I'm actually following on the screen. Okay. During the years leading up to 1914, Charles Taze Russell and his associates acted as the messenger who would clear up, the, clear up a way before the messianic kingdom was established. Malachi 3.1 That group also did the work of a watchman. Using the magazine Zion's Watchtower and Herald of Christ's Presence, to help warn of God's judgment and to spread the good news about God's kingdom. After the kingdom was established, Jesus appointed a small group of men to serve as the faithful slave. Since then, the faithful slave, now known as the governing body, has done the work of a watchman. To take, oh no, it takes the lead not only in warning of the day of vengeance, but also in proclaiming the day of Jehovah's goodwill. While the faithful slave takes the lead in the watchman work, Jesus assigned all of his followers to keep on the watch. We obey that command by remaining spiritually awake, loyally supporting the modern day watchman. We prove that we are awake by fulfilling our responsibility to preach. And then they cite, 2 Timothy 4.2. We'll have something to say about that. What made, motivates us? In part, it is our desire to save lives. Soon multitudes will lose their lives because they ignored the warning call of the modern day watchman. But our primary motive is that we, know, we long to share the best of news. Pure worship has been restored. Right now, during the year of Jehovah's goodwill, the door is open for many more to join us in worshiping our just and loving God, Jehovah. Soon all on earth who survive the end of this wicked system will benefit from the merciful rule of his son, Christ Jesus. How could we hold back from assisting the, the modern day watchman in telling such good news? Even before this wicked system ends, Jehovah has united his people in a miraculous way. The next chapter will discuss a prophecy involving two sticks that are used to illustrate how this has happened. Mm. Back to paragraph 23. Notice the very s subtle but brazen transition of thought here from a prophet, Malachi, one man, prophesying about another prophet, one John man. the Baptist, one man, to a <clears throat> group. You yeah. have said Charles T. Russell and his associates acted as the messenger. So Which you move is, from an individual to a group without even noticing. Yeah. And it's also a rewriting of history. Yeah. Because they did not view it to be Russell and his associates. That's a new new take on the history. That's rewritten history. They thought Charles Tays Russell was the FDS. He was the messenger. He was the voice of Jehovah. He, he was, was the, the man with the ink horn. He was everything. Yeah, he was the modern Ezekiel. You actually called him that. So this is yeah. modern fantasy about actual history. Yeah. That's being misrepresented here. Mm -hmm. That's bad enough. So, by the <laughs> way, that that's all taken care of in several of our videos about the book of Ezekiel. You can find them in the Ezekiel playlist, by the way. Yeah. And then in, in mm -hmm. paragraph 25, we have... Jesus assigned all of his followers to keep on the watch. Fine. But then you have that watching involves supporting the modern day watchman. We prove that we're awake by fulfilling our responsibility to preach. Now you have here a fantasy built upon another fantasy, namely that the watchman is a group. And here you've equated it with, of course, the faithful slave that, the slave, <laughs> slave, the faithful slave that is taking the lead in the watchman work. But who's doing the preaching? And it's obviously not the faithful slave. It's everybody else that supports them. Yeah. For a long, long time now that's been the case, right? And even before you equated the faithful and discreet slave with the governing body, that was the case for about 90 years since Rutherford's day. Mm. That, that basically 
the front men are doing the work and the guy who's the slave supposedly is is giving the orders mm -hmm. and look at the text they use though <clears throat> second timothy 4 2 we have a history with that text don't yeah we? yeah the very last time i went to a kingdom hall meeting we had been talking uh, for days probably but not long before that meeting we had been talking about their misuse of that text well, what does yeah. the text say mm -hmm. they've only cited here not quoted but cited 2 Timothy 4 2 which says preach the word be ready in season and out of season reprove rebuke exhort with complete patience and teaching even from that verse you can kind of guess who's been talked to the clue is Timothy mm -hmm. Timothy is being talked to so verse 1 why did you leave it out I charge you singular I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus who is to judge the living and the dead by his appearing and his kingdom so here his kingdom is not in the past it's in the future and it has to do with his appearing mm -hmm. I can understand why you would want to leave that verse out because mm -hmm. what you have said here is that this is this it? good news involves something that happened before yeah the, the restoring of pure worship you say it happened from 1919 onwards mm -hmm. well no here the good news that Timothy is being taught to preach. is being told to preach involves a, a, a future appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. so obviously this has never been your message but that text is used regularly as the the text to to beat Jehovah's Witnesses with that it's your job it's yeah. your responsibility to preach, not looking at the context and thinking about who's talking to who in that particular passage. And it's telling. That's the only citation they use here is yeah. 2 Timothy 4.2. To... Even though at the end of the paragraph you cite, again, as usual, Matthew 24.14, which mm -hmm. is a prediction that the good news of the kingdom will be preached, but it's not an assignment. It's a prediction. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Now they have this comment about not only the... The good news being pure worship has been restored no that's that's a misrepresentation not just of the text ezekiel the specific text we're in right now but the whole book the whole um, book says yeah. that pure worship will not be restored until the lord comes okay. again yeah. yahweh comes and visits his people personally and it's not what the good news is the good news is about jesus it's not about restoration of worship the irony at the end of paragraph 25 that the, the, we're, we're talking about soon all on earth who survive the end of this wicked system will benefit from the merciful rule of his son Christ Jesus and then you realize what is that merciful son Christ Jesus going to be doing soon and who are the ones it's the ones that survive which is you so he's going to wipe everyone out and just leave you and you're judged on the basis of of, of how you treat his modern-day watchman. So at least two things are revealed by that one comment. This mm -hmm. underlining of the merciful rule of his son is in the future. One is about you, which is you think of yourselves as the only ones worthy yeah. of so his mercy. Worthy of his mercy? Yeah. And of that says something about how you view him, namely that he's judging people on the basis of loyalty to human beings, yeah. namely nine men yeah. who and are that, your rulers. And that just keeps going. I mean, when, when you talk about getting past Armageddon, the scenario that you're given is that, that the governing body will still be writing and giving you books to read and new truths to learn. And so you're still being judged based on how you treat them. You know, that that's going to be your eternity. Do you really want to be there? The merciful rule of the organization, yeah. apparently to time indefinite, right? Yeah. So that's the, the ruler, Christ Jesus. He's ruling you on the basis of your faithfulness to not even him, but your faithfulness. So you'll to never them. see him. You'll never see Christ. Yeah. They've ruled that one out. It's just going to carry on the way it is now. So what's our link? Our link is what J.W. Org is not telling you, the good news according to Peter. Mm. See you next time. Bye.